Let's evaluate some limits with a TI-83 calculator. We'll evaluate them numerically. We have the limit from the left of x squared minus 1 over x minus 1 as x approaches 1 from the left. We have the same limit but from the right. And then we have the two-sided limit. To evaluate these limits numerically, we're going to use the table feature. And to do that, we'll go first to the y equals menu and enter the expression x squared minus 1 divided by x minus 1. Notice that I'm putting the numerator and denominator in parentheses, and we need to do that because we have more than one term in both the numerator and the denominator. Before we look at the table, I'm going to check the table setup. It's the second command above window, so first hit the second button and then the window button. And I want to change the independent variable to ask so that I can choose whatever the x value, so that I can choose the x value to be whatever I'd like. And then it will uh, automatically calculate the dependent variable from that. So going over to the table, I'm, again, I'm going to hit the second command and then the graph key to get to the table. The limit from the left means the limit as we approach 1 from uh, values to the left of 1. So the values are going to be slightly less than 1. So we could start far away, we wouldn't have to, but we could plug in 0, see what the value is at 0. And then getting closer to 1, we could plug in 0 0.5 and 0 0.9 and 0 0.99. To evaluate the limit numerically, I want to evaluate the expression for x values that are getting closer and closer to 1 and what we see from the expression from the y1 uh, column is that as x gets closer and closer to 1 it seems to indicate that the y values are getting closer and closer to 2 and we can go as close as we'd like this doesn't quite mean that we're at 2. Uh, using the arrow keys, we can go over and see a more accurate expression, uh, see the expression without so much rounding. So we're still a little bit less than 2, but we're definitely getting closer and closer to 2. And we can surmise from that pattern that the limit from the left equals 2. Going back up to the top of the table, let me delete these x values and enter in values that approach 1 from the right. So I can enter values like 1.1, 1.01, 1.001, .001, and so on. And again, the y values that come out of the expression as x approaches 1 from the right, the y values seem to be approaching 2. So it indicates that the limit equals 2. And because the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit approach the same value, the two-sided limit also exists and equals 2. A nice feature of the graphing calculator, of course, is that we can graph expressions as well. So let's take a look at a graph of our function. Again, in the y equals menu, we defined y1 to be this function. I'm going to go to zoom and choose a standard window, option 6. And let's see what that looks like. Well, it seems like our function is just a straight line hitting the trace key as we get closer and closer to x values equaling 1 the y values are getting closer and closer to 2. The calculator doesn't take us exactly to 1, but in, in the trace mode here, we can just kind of type in an x value. So if I type in the x value 1 and hit enter, well, I can see that the function is undefined there, as, as we know it is. It's undefined at 1. But if I type in 1.1, I can see that the value of the function is 2.1. If I type in 0.9999, you know, a bunch of nines, 
uh, again, we see the function is very close to 2, 1.99999. So we can confirm th from the graph uh, what we saw in the table. Another zoom setting, this is the standard window that goes from negative 10 to 10, negative 10 to 10. Uh, another nice kind of zoom setting here, the decimal zoom. Let me select that. And now if we look at the window, we see kind of a couple things here. If I look at the window, um, the settings have changed a little bit. So the window goes from negative 4.7 to 4.7, negative 3.1 to 3.1. And what's kind of cool about the decimal zoom is that if I hit the trace key, now using the arrows to go across, the x values, they just count up by one-tenth each time. And so I can see that as we move closer and closer to 1 for x, the y values are getting closer and closer to 2, but once we get to 1, it's undefined. So there's a hole in the graph of this function. Essentially, the graph of this expression is a straight line, but there's a hole in the graph at 1. But as we get closer and closer to that hole, the hole is at the coordinates 1, 2, and so the limit, as we get closer and closer to that hole, the limit is getting closer and closer to 2. So the y value is getting closer and closer to 2 as the x value gets closer and closer to 1. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks.